like the sun, except it's 10 times hotter. This is a pivotal step in the creation of plasma-powered reactors. One company believes that we could have nuclear fusion power by the year 2030, according to Life Science. Private nuclear fusion company has heated the plasma of hydrogen to 27 million degrees, that's uh, Fahrenheit, and also that's converted to 50 million degrees Celsius, in a new reactor for the first time, and is hotter than the core of the sun. UK-based Tokamak Energy says a plasma test is a milestone on its quest to be the first in the world to produce commercial electricity from fusion power, possibly by the year 2030. The company, named after the vacuum chamber that contains a fusion reaction inside powerful magnetic fields, announced the creation of the super hot plasma inside its experimental ST40 fusion reactor, reactor in early June. Successful testing of the highest plasma temperature achieved so far by Tokamak Energy means that the reactor will now be prepared next year for a test of an even hotter plasma of more than 180 million degrees Fahrenheit, 100 million degrees Celsius. That will put the ST40 reactor within the operating temperatures needed for controlled nuclear fusion. The company plans to build a further reactor by 2025, producing several megawatts of fusion power. Tokamak Energy co-founder David Kingham says it's been really exciting. It's been very good to see the data coming through and being able to get the high temperature plasmas probably beyond what we were hoping for. It's like a star in a jar. Nuclear fusion of hydrogen into the heavier element helium is the main nuclear reaction that keeps our sun and other stars burning for billions of years, which is why a fusion reactor is something resembling a star in a jar. Nuclear fusion of hydrogen into heavier helium, main nuclear reaction that keeps our sun and other stars burning for billions of years. Nuclear fusion also takes place inside powerful thermonuclear weapons, also known as hydrogen bombs, where hydrogen is heated to fusion temperatures by plutonium fission devices, resulting in an explosion hundreds of thousands of times more powerful than a fission bomb. Earthbound controlled fusion projects like I and uh, Tokamak Energy reactors will also fuse hydrogen fuel but at much higher temperatures and lower pressures than exist inside the sun. Proponents of nuclear fusion say it could make many other types of electricity generating obsolete by producing large amounts of electricity from relatively small amounts of heavy hydrogen isotopes deuterium and tritium which are relatively abundant in ordinary seawater. 50 kilograms of tritium and 33 kilograms of deuterium would produce a gigawatt of electricity for a year, while the amounts of heavy hydrogen fuel in the reactor at any one time would be only a few grams, Kingman said. That's enough to power the energy for more than 700,000 American homes, according to figures from the U.S. Department of Energy. That's according to Live Science. like a sun, but 10 times hotter, a step in creation of plasma-powered reactors, according to RT. An alliance of 35 countries finished laying the groundwork for one of humanity's most ambitious experiments to harness nearly unlimited amounts of energy by creating small stars on our Earth. Extreme heat and gravity inside the core of the sun and other stars make hydrogen atoms collide and fuse into heavier helium atoms, as we said, releasing tremendous amount of energy. Scientists want to replicate a similar mechanism here on Earth to generate energy that will be efficient, renewable, and carbon emission-free, so it will not cause climate change. Also, controlled fusion reactors are projected to create 4 million times more energy than burning, the co burning of coal, oil, or gas, four times as much as nuclear power plants, but the design of a large-scale fusion device requires immense resources, 
So a decade ago, 35 countries combined their efforts to build the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER for short. The reactor is being constructed outside the Cadarache Research Center in southern France, and the EU and US, Russia, India, South Korea, and Japan are among the participants in this ambitious project. Fusion facilitating high temperatures, triggering the high energy collision of atoms and dense plasma, making collision more likely. And to control the reaction, the scientists are planning to build a tokamak experimental do donut shaped vessel like device capable of confining and controlling the ultra hot plasma with powerful magnets. The idea of tokamaks was suggested by Soviet physicists back in 1950s, and the first workable small-scale tokamaks were designed by a team led by Lev Artsimovich in the late 1960s. Workers at ITER paved the way for the installation of the tokamak this week when they set up an Indian-built cryostat, cryostat base in its lower cylinder once fully complete, it'll be a huge 3,085-ton stainless steel vacuum pressure chamber that's needed to maintain the ultra-cool environment for tokamak's magnets. And this will help the device to generate a magnetic field powerful enough to contain plasma that will reach up to 150 million degrees Celsius. So that's about 10 times hotter than the sun's core. That's very ambitious and exciting, as you can understand. And from there, the energy produces, produced inside the tokamak will be absorbed as heat in its walls. The plant will then use the heat to make steam and electricity with turbines and generators, just like the conventional power plant. First energy producing small star is set to be created inside the Eider tokamak December 2025, but it will take at least a decade to fully power up the facility according to Sabina Griffith, the project spokesperson. Russia, in the meantime, plans to launch its Tokamak T-15MD by the end of next year, 2020. The device will be used for the ITER research. It was designed by Kurchatov Institute in Moscow and is based on previous working models. That's uh, all wonderful. There's an embedded video here you can see. My question is, what happens once the um, facility to cool down the, uh, this environment, the chamber, the vacuum pressure chamber needed to maintain the ultra-cool environment for tokamak magnets, what happens if that fails? What happens if that cooling of the magnets fails? For example, Aka Fukushima. We still have Fukushima going on after the earthquake tsunami and the triple whammy, the disaster of the uh, nuclear power plant, which is still contaminating the area and our Pacific Ocean with uh, radiation. Now, uh, what happens when this vacuum pressure chamber needed to maintain the cooling of the environment because this will be like a small star on Earth. You can imagine the 10 uh, times hotter than the sun scenario. What that, would, what that would mean to Earth if the cooling does not work. Thus, I'm sorry I'm playing the devil's advocate, but uh, you have to ask things like this. Now, according to phys.org, this is uh, the article by uh, provided by the conversation, which is uh, uh, Creative Commons. A new twist on fusion power to help bring limitless clean energy. The world struggling to kick its addiction to fossil fuels and feed its growing appetite for energy. There's one technology in development, sounds too good to be true, nuclear fusion. If it works, fusion power offers vast amounts of clean energy with a near limitless fuel source virtually zero carbon emissions, and if it works, but there are terms, uh, there are teams research of researchers around the world and billions of dollars being spent to make sure it does. February of last year, the new chapter of fusion energy research commerce, com uh, commenced with the formal opening of 
widen Windenstein 7X, the experiment costing $1.4 billion, a fusion reactor built in Griefswald, Germany, to test a reactor design called a Stellarator. Stellarator. It's planned that by around the year 2021, it will be able to operate for up to 30 minutes duration, which would be a record for a fusion reactor. This is an important step en route to demonstrating an essential feature of a future fusion power plant, continuous operation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.